think about it. And th thank you for coming. Uh, there is so few of you, and I know some of you, <laughs> some of you as well. So uh, I'd be just interested. Uh, where, where do you come from? What uh, brings you here? Just maybe in one sentence. Uh, that would be much to be very interesting for me as well. And I can also then maybe adjust my uh, my short lecture on the reprivatization and the reprivatization scandal. What do you think about it? Just in just few words. Okay, so you're you're working here. No. No. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Gotcha. Uh, my name is Philip. I'm a uh, Polish Canadian. Uh, I'm a student at the College of Europe, and uh, I'm interested by sort of uh, the transition and the ideas that happen. So. Cool. So my name is Philip. And he's also our lawyer, who is spe who is uh, yeah, right. special, starting to be specialized in uh, reprivatization. So he can also answer some questions as well, more specific. And you? Cool. Okay, so you're you're the last one. If I can ask you, what brings you here? Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Jim Cadman, I'm the Labour Party United Economics in Warsaw at the university, and uh, been quite attractive. Okay, great. So it's a very distinguished crowd, and uh, um, uh, thank you that you uh, you came to our. Oh, here's to Anna. Anna is from our association as well. Uh, so I'll be just, uh, I will just give, I don't know, 45 minutes, maybe quick story on the reprivatization and how the reprivatization scandal unfolded. Uh, my English is not the best, uh, but I think I can uh, handle, uh, I can handle it if you have any questions, uh, if you think something is not uh, clear enough, uh, feel free to ask me any questions. Uh, since the, the, this topic we are dealing with, uh, the restitution of of, of uh, property in Poland is so complex. Is so it, for me at the beginning when I started to somehow be interested in the reprivatization, it was for me like a cloud, like a very something very foggy, uh, and uh, it took me a while to understand what is really going on in uh, Poland and in Warsaw, especially. Uh, Warsaw is a very special uh, city and has a different story to tell than other parts of Poland when it comes to the uh, reprivatization. So why is it very specific, specific uh, why is it very specific city? Uh, answer is very, I think, very clear and uh, very simple. Uh, Warsaw was completely, or not, maybe not completely, but uh, in more than 50% destroyed during the war, especially uh, parts of Warsaw where the um, uh, Warsaw Uprising and Warsaw Ghetto Uprising took place. Uh, when you when you go to uh, to the, the former Jewish district, that, there was nothing basically. And when it comes to the uh, to the central districts, it was uh, it was destroyed more than more in than in fact fifty percent. So uh, city was completely destroyed after the Second World War, and it was so destroyed that even the communist regime was thinking about moving our capital from Warsaw to Łódź. Łódź is like the, it's the, the, it used to be the second biggest city uh, in Poland. And uh, uh, so it can, you can imagine how, how, the, how, the, the how big was the uh, destruction of uh, Warsaw. And uh, 
and then you know people you know are, we live in a very different uh, current uh, you know political atmosphere and uh, uh, than we, <laughs> we used to but and we tend to forget about the involvement involvement of the the former regime in the uh, in this process of, of of rebuilding Warsaw so there was a decision made by uh, basically by uh, Bielesław Bierut and I think Władysław Gomułka Bielesław Bierut was back then the president of Poland it, uh, and uh, Władysław Gomułka was uh, first uh, prime minister and they uh, they just decided that we need to rebuild Warsaw that Warsaw has to be rebuilt and uh, it was a political decision basically but it also it was also a it was a decision made by thousands of people who were coming back to Warsaw uh, uh, in 1945 to, uh, we call them Robinsonovia you know you, there is Robinson Crusoe I think it, it comes from it's originated in the Robinson Crusoe so they, these guys were called the Robinsonovia the people who uh, come back to Warsaw uh, completely destroyed Warsaw uh, and they also um, took part in this huge uh, achievement uh, uh, of rebuilding Warsaw so so in order to in order to somehow rebuild Warsaw uh, they Boleslav Bierut and the government and the communist government uh, published a decree it was a, it was a decree uh, that all land all land in Port Warsaw is nationalized so you had whole land like every part of, of Warsaw was basically the land was nationalized but what is very important and uh, to understand uh, how the process took was uh, took place is that they uh, the, the buildings were uh, detached from the land so you could have still be uh, you can still be uh, be owner no maybe not owner but it was called uh, which is like like uh, you could indefinitely rent the building. You can still have the building, uh, but you cannot have the land. So, and the decree gave the possibility for all the people who lost their land to get recompensation. And those who uh, were lucky enough uh, that their buildings were in, weren't destroyed during the war could have pro still keep their buildings if they were not meant to be uh, used for the public uh, reasons for the public means and they were not destroyed basically so it which is quite important because there are there is this there is now for example a big uh, quarrel how big was how how the destroy this destroyment no no destroyment how the how how uh, how, how big is the how big was this destruction of the building to call it a destroyed building yeah so uh, and uh, it used to be said that if two thirds of the building was destroyed, then the building was supposed to be not existing. So um, so most of the buildings, uh, most of the many 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 of these buildings were were destroyed more in two thirds. So this was uh, quite easy to uh, quite easy to assess. Uh, yeah, this is like a, it's a typical. Uh, picture from this period of time where uh, citizens of Warsaw uh, just took to the streets and you know and uh, uh, try to somehow you know rebuild Warsaw uh, and it, there were like I, I don't remember exactly how many but it were millions of free hours of labor that were put into the uh, the reconstruction of, of, of Warsaw mm. Yeah, this is also like a typical picture where uh, you can see the prud Prudential over there. You know, do you know this? Do you know this building? You know, this, it used to be the highest building in in Warsaw before the war. Uh, yeah, the construction of Warsaw is taking place. Blah blah. So, um, so basically, uh, basically the people who could get back their property could ha somehow keep their property were very very limited. They had to. Uh, submit a special form to keep the to keep their building and they had to prove they have to pay for the uh, for this uh, for this submission they have to 
prove that they are still uh, connected to the building. So they had to be in Poland, they had to have money, and the building had to be in place. So you can imagine how tiny group of people were allowed to somehow be able to keep their buildings in uh, keep their buildings, uh, which for in you know in mo most of the cases of mo most of the cases people would not get anything, or uh, and they would be allowed to get some kind of recompensation. But what is interesting that the decree the Vieru decree is still a law in Poland, and it's it and all the reprivatization which is now going on in Warsaw is made is based on this decree, which was issued in 45, yeah, 1945. Which is quite interesting because on the one hand, we are criticizing the, the communists and the law and everything, but on the other hand, it's used by the now to get the property. But the, what we say and what we believe and how we uh, look into these cases, most of, the, most of the cases that are now uh, taking place in Warsaw are basically illegal because there was never a legal uh, path to to re get these buildings because most of the building was destroyed. People didn't submit the these forms in uh, uh, pro pro uh, proper order. They didn't they didn't um, fulfill the uh, all the requirements. So, for example, you know Marienstadt, Stare Miasto, Old Town. You have all cases. You have all cases of buildings that are getting, uh, that are re reprivatized, even though everything was destroyed there. So we ask, how come is it possible that all these buildings are now being under reprivatization? Uh, yeah. So uh, so basically, this is the. This is the, 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 the main thing where the, 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 uh, was the uh, most of the buildings were owned by the private citizens. So there were around 40,000 plots of land and buildings before the war uh, that were nationalized in 1945, 6, and 7, and, and after the war. And there were around 8,000 people who submitted this, uh, submitted these forms to get to keep their properties. Uh, around 4,000 buildings were already given back, and there is around, around 4,000 cases still going on. And this is just a guy <laughs> who was uh, doing a uh, reprivatization, there, you know, because there are, I don't want to, <laughs> there are so many different uh, aspects of this process and of this, uh, that I just want to focus on a few of them because there, were, there was the restitution of church property as well, which is another story. And there was also a form of restitution of of enterprises. So you have all you have also like all this domain of uh, enterprises which were nationalized before the uh, after the war, and now they are also being re, uh, re I don't know how to call it. They were re re reborn, uh, in, and and they also now claim. Uh, land and property in uh, Warsaw, and it is it's done on some it's a bit a bit different uh, path of of reprivatization. What they do, they buy, they buy like the like they, they buy this uh, stock, uh, this like you know like this 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 the proof of ownership before yeah. So these used to be just uh, like a historical. Stuff, yeah. You could buy it at the, I don't know, at the history store, at the, at the, uh, you know, store with old, old stuff. You know, I don't know, how, I don't know how is it called in English, but it was just for uh, hobbyists. But in Poland, this stuff turned out to be a very, you know, worthy piece of papers. And what they did, they basically they they claimed that they they buy they they were buying all this piece of 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 uh, uh, of Actia, and they were claiming that now they are the, the legal representative of all these companies that seed to exist 60 years ago. And what is more, they 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 started to claim, they started to claim all this all this land. So you have, for example, Hotel Europejski. You know for sure this building, yeah. So this was also it was an enterprise, nationalized, rep 
it was reborn and they got back Hotel Europejski. Uh, but you, do, you don't need to look far away. On Foxhall Street, you have if you go outside from this building and you go to the left, you will, you turn to the left, you will see the like a soccer field, yeah. And this was also a land that used to be owned by a, 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 a an American company uh, that uh, used to have their like I, I, don't, I think that were some also some sports facilities. And this company was reborn a few years ago by a business by uh by a, by two guys both of them were arrested today so uh happy <laughs> happy we so these guys recreated this this company and they claimed that they are the now they they are the they want to get get this soccer field uh which is crazy because it was an american company and it was it was paid by the polish government because after the war poland started to to pay uh pay off the, gov the, the Western government, the citizens of Western governments that left property in Poland. So you had at least, I don't remember, it was like at least 15 countries like Belgium, Sweden, France, Great Britain, uh, United States, uh, that signed special agreements with Poland in order to fulfill their uh, claims and uh, Pay, pay them, uh, pay them, uh, pay them for the property that they left in Poland. So this company also got money from Polish government. But anyways, these two guys somehow managed to convince the, the our local government that now they are the rightful owners of this uh, soccer field, and they want to exchange the soccer field for another plot of land, and this and. The mayor of Warsaw said, yeah, that's a great idea. And so they tried to change, change this plot of land for a piece of land next to the Palace of Culture where the new zoning law gave them uh, gave the possibility to build a skyscraper. So uh, that it's a, it's a story which, which sounds quite incredible, but uh, I assure you that it's true. And what's more, I, I also as, like I, I submitted a, like a legal, I don't know, like a legal. Mm, I basically we went to the uh, prosecutor office and said that this this is basically uh, one big fraud and look into it. So now they are looking into it because it's it's part of a very of much bigger uh, scandal. So this guy also used to be one of these hobbyists turned that turned into a professional. Uh, business par businessmen who try to to grab land all over uh, Warsaw, but w what what I said at the beginning that all basically all land was nationalized. So pl uh, the empty uh, free free empty uh, pieces of land, destroyed buildings that there, there was no path to to rest to, to for reprovat to oh my god. These words are too complicated to to, uh, to restitution for to them. And even though there was no such path, so there was no such legal path, you would you would look you would uh, look into the Warsaw of privatization and you would find. I don't know. May, I don't know if they are hundreds, but at least tens tens of plot of 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 of, uh, of property being uh, reprivatized in this way. So. So just uh, so the scandal broke out uh, uh, one year ago, basically in April, when the local uh, well, local um, uh, local newspaper, uh, but not the local newspaper, but the local edition for the one of the main Warsaw uh, Poland uh, newspapers, I mean Gazeta Wyborcza, uh, published an article that was basically saying that uh, that this is this is this is this is this is. <laughs> So they wanted to build two skyscrapers, and so this is the this is the view of for of, this is a view from our perspective, and so this there were there were two skyscrapers being meant to be built, one here, another one here, and so I was just telling you about one of one of these, and there was a story about another one. So another, uh, there was a plot of land that used to be uh, before the war was used to be uh, a building, 
uh, and there was, you know, it was a normal street, uh, and it was bought during the war by the by a Dutch citizen, and uh, no Danish citizen, and there was there was this this okay maybe I will look into. Uh, okay, so uh, just uh, okay. I'll, okay, I will change a bit. Uh, just to say a few more words. This is Yolanta Brzeska. I don't know if you heard about about her. You probably heard about her. So it, she's the like she's the she's uh, face. Uh, you know, she's. The, I think the, the 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 this is the most famous case of 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 wild of you know of wild reprivatization. She was she was murdered by probably by mafia. She was probably kidnapped from her house, and she was put on fire alive. In uh, and she was found dead. Her body, her corpse was found dead in uh, Las Kabatsky. So she was fighting with guys who were professionally, uh, you know, uh, taking. These properties, you know, this the, the, her owner of her house was this Marek Mosakowski, and this guy probably owns around, you know, 20, 30, at least 30 buildings in Warsaw. And he, uh, they somehow managed to reprovide, oh my God, this word, to restitute uh, this house where she was living in. But what is interesting, as I told you at the beginning, this building was completely destroyed. And it was rebuilt by parents of Yolanta Brzeska. So how come they, it even happened? So it happened, okay, it, somehow it happened. And uh, sh so these guys were very violent. They were, they were known that from their violent ways. And so they, they when they, so you, if you get, if you are, you know, if you get apartment building with tenants inside, because what, this is what happened, yeah? The, 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 the city, the government, said now you are getting whole building with people and these people are now your responsibility so all the, so so what these new owners of these buildings what they wanted to do they of course they wanted to have an empty building here yeah, because building with tenants is a problem especially when the tenants have rent controlled apart uh, apartments yeah so they don't pay the full price the not the the market price but they pay this state controlled rent uh, city controlled rent so so you need to get rid of them yeah and you can get rid of them in different ways so at the very beginning of this process it was uh, it was more much more violent than it is now but it used to be like that that they for, for example they cut off their heating or they cut off their water I know one case where they just basically took off the uh, roof, <laughs> like whole roof. There was uh, there was one of one case of uh, like this in Praga. So make the conditions where these people live as worse, as terrible as they can, as 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 you can. So this is one way. Another one, another way is to raise the rents. So this is more complicated because you need to. Uh, at, you need to justify that you are raising this, these rents. But you can imagine if you have a uh, if you if you are if you have a lawyer and you are rich and you know you can you have much more diff you have you have all this apparatus that you can use you, you have you know you, this all these tools that you can use against the tenants and the tenants most of the tenants are not that well off they don't have money for lawyers so. You can imagine that they were losing these cases, or they even did. They didn't even appeal the new rents because they didn't know how to do it. You know, uh, it's it was a very, uh, very unjust situation. And what is more, the courts, the tri tribunal court, gave this verdict that basically you can, if you if there is a reason, you can raise the tents as much as you can. So they 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 have. Uh, uh, God knows this. I don't know how uh, they use this phrase of uh, uh, good profit. Like the 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 high our our tribunal court uh, said that the owners of the building have to they have the right to 
uh, good profit. So what does it mean? We don't know, but we know that it opened the, it uh, allowed them to raise the tents, raise the rents very, very, um, very, very up, very, very high. So her case was uh, very famous because she was kidnapped, probably kidnapped from her house, uh, killed in this very uh, dramatic and uh, a cruel way. And the prosecutor office said it was a uh, suicide. So she was, she was supposed to, you know, go to the forest, put herself on fire, and then uh, take care of the, you know, of the canister, you know, the, uh, the, the bottle for the fuel, because there was no bottle for the fuel. So. Uh, it's hard to uh, it's hard to uh, imagine, but uh, for two years our prosecutor um, our prosecute the prosecution was uh, was saying that basically she she committed suicide. They have they didn't uh, they didn't uh, do the basic stuff around the in, uh, that you do in such cases. For example, they they don't have their buildings. Their cell phone buildings, they don't have the video footage and etc. So, so they did a lot of of huge mistakes that now make it very difficult to uh, to find the you know the people who 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 kill her. Uh, yeah, so this was one of the protests against uh, against uh, the situation. This is, and this is uh, basically a new era because it used to be, it used to be a problem of uh, tenants, and it was, and always in media, it was uh, somehow, uh, I don't know how to call it, but it was said, you know, this, this tenants they live in these huge houses in the city center, city center, and they have this, you know, rent, rent controlled apartments, and. Uh, you know, it's not just that they it, it's it's not just that they live there. You know, maybe this reprivatization. Okay, there are problems with it, but overall, it's a good thing because in the city center, there should be only rich people. You know, should be living. Yeah. So, so uh, and for years it was a campaign. There were you know tenants movement that was trying to ri to, to 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 raise awareness. But frankly speaking. Uh, they weren't heard by the by the mainstream media, so. Uh, no, no, not this way. So basically, this is when we started to act. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say that we are. I mean, the the the, the city movements and the, our association, my former association. Uh, is the only reason that uh, you know the situation has changed, but uh, for sure this this was a big uh, step forward. So we started to act uh, in a bit different manner and in a bit different fashion, and we started to link into the, the, this process not from the tenants perspective, but more from the uh, law and order perspective, and more from the public space uh, and public good and corruption you know in, from this 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 way we started to start into to dig into this process problem and at the beginning we uh, we uh, we did a small campaign against a building that was and it it, it stands now it, it was built uh, just uh, in front of the royal castle uh, have you have you seen this building yeah, so this building was built by these two guys that were arrested today. So, uh, and it turned out that this building was it's for it was it was uh, built the 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 you know the the local authority the the, the that gave permission to uh, for this apartment building for this office building. It, it turned out that a clerk that gave this permission. Uh, was mother of one of the architects of this building, so we started to talk about this uh, stuff from you know 
from this perspective, from the perspective how the law is being abused uh, and how the so we we use the we uh, we started to use as well uh, organized happenings. It, it turned out to be a very efficient way to uh, mm, to gather attention to uh, to to put our message uh, to push our message and uh, our agenda. So this is, for example, we said that this is the end of uh, the old town at the registry of. Uh, uh, UNESCO heritage site. So we we didn't know that this is the end, but we said, yeah, this will be the end. And we did this uh, we did this fake uh, funeral with music and uh, this kind of stuff. And this is this is when basically the this conversation about uh, this 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 whole enterprise, this whole enterprise, which. Uh, where privatization turned into uh, started basically. So uh, yeah, so it, this was to, in 2013, uh, uh, September 2013. Uh, no, not September. Uh, October uh, 2013, when we started this campaign against Walter privatization, because it turned out that this building is being built on a, a plot of land that was reprivat re 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 was reprivatized. And it turned out that the mayor gave uh, gave back with this plot of land a piece of the tunnel of the tunnel of Trasa Vuzet. I don't know. Probably you've seen this tunnel. So now part of this tunnel is private, <laughs> uh, which is also hard to hard to hard to believe. But this is how we start um, start to 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 make ordinary warsawers more interested in this uh, in this topic uh, yeah this is another happening we did them quite quite a lot of the, with them and finally we finally we uh, we knew that there is this there's this one guy especially this one businessman who is basically doing whatever he wants and he's very powerful and he's very well connected to the uh, you know our political local uh, establishment and he has he is he is in process or he just uh, he was able to reprivatize the, the this, this pieces of land in the you know like the best spots uh, of Warsaw so you would have him this is the guy as well this is the guy who was arrested today uh, so you have this guy uh, this is the Foxhall, yeah, this is the Foxhall football football court. This is the Shara, which is next to the Rosbrat, which is like one of the most um, uh, most prestigious parts of Warsaw and one of the most expensive. This is the this is the, this building, uh, uh, this building on uh, in front of the the, the royal castle, and you not, here you have uh, gymna gymnasium. Uh, which was one of the best uh, public schools in Warsaw, and this guy basically uh, forced this build this school to they they shut down the school basically uh, at the end. And what this for? He wanted also to 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 grab a piece of land just next to um, monument of Kos uh, Kopernik on the Krakowskie Przedmieście. So you know, like. Very ambitious, very ambitious, and very bold program of. Uh, but he, this guy, never went into apartments building. So he was he he kept away from the stories, like Yolanta Zbrzeska uh, story. So he thought I may probably he thought that this is this is maybe more safe. I don't know. But he's like a very you know, we don't know any almost anything about this guy. We just know that he's kind of friends with former president Alexander Kwasniewski, that his son held a uh, wedding party at the, uh, the Opera House in Warsaw, and there were only two wedding parties at the Opera House for the last 30 years. So this is being recorded, so I won't, <laughs> I won't say uh, all, but, uh, you know, very well connected guy. We don't know anything about. Yeah, today. <laughs>
Uh, I don't know because I don't know what they have on, on, on him, but hopefully a lot. <laughs> so you have this, this, this is Yol uh, Yolanta, not Yolanta, Julia Pitera. She's a member of European Parliament for the Civic Platform. And she also turned out to be a friend of him. And she sent letters to Warsaw Mayor to uh, you know, facilitate the reprivatization process on behalf of him. Uh, and you have all these guys from the mayor's office that uh, took part in this, uh, uh, in this all, uh, his all endeavors. So this guy, so this guy is being arrested right now as well. He's the guy who, uh, uh, who was responsible for the reprivatization at the mayor's office. And he was the only guy uh, who had legal authority to give to, to pass this, all these buildings, which is quite interesting because he was just a regular, basically he was a regular uh, clerk, and, but the mayor of Warsaw only, only gave him this, this legal authority to, to, to sign the, all the decisions and stuff, which is quite interesting. So we published this, this map because we thought that, that this is, this, we were kind of desperate that this guy is basically doing whatever he can, he wants, and uh, local media, the prosecutor office, basically nobody cares. So we wanted to show how big is his enterprise uh, and how he influenced life of ordinary Warsawers. Because these were people who, uh, you know, who had a uh, soccer field, yeah, this, you know, people, just kids, this gymna gymnasium thing, and of course the and uh, the, 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 this, this office building being built just in front of the Royal Castle in one of the most important probably places uh, of Warsaw and our country and it's, and it's being built not only in this, this you know, <laughs> uh, in such context, yeah, and this is, I think this is, says a lot about, uh, you know, <laughs> our country. Uh, so, so he was not very happy about it, uh, this guy. And uh, he, sued, he sued us, uh, and this is how my also my <laughs> my long uh, court uh, history has uh, begun. Uh, I, I was sued altogether nine times. Uh, I think five cases are still pending. I, four I won, and two two of them I won uh, with him. <laughs> Uh, so this is quite nice, and it makes me really uh, happy that after this three three years of of legal battle with him, now he has serious uh, legal problems, <laughs> and not me. And but at the beginning, I lo I lost the first case. I lost the first case with him, and uh, I remember the day when I got this verdict, and uh, basically the court said uh, that the the, the way it is presented, the way how you connect the dots and you make all these connections, it gives, uh, 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 it, it itself is a message. It, it, and it shows, this is, this is a message, this, is, this shows a web of connections, of mafia connections, and this itself shows your motives, so you can be, uh, you can be uh, sentenced because because you just connected the dots. That was basically the the uh, the, the reasoning of um, of the, the judge. Unfortunately, the the sec like the the, the, the the second instance, like the appeal the appeal court uh, basically said that this first verdict was uh, complete bullshit, and they even used the phrase I quote that this first verdict was like in Belarus, which shows that the court system kind of works, <laughs> I can say. Uh, so it was a very important day for, uh, I think, for everybody that you can just, you know, for all the whistleblowers, all the um, uh, watchdogs, that you can basically put information in this graphic, put together information in this graphic way and, uh, and just share it to, uh, to people. And uh, because it was a huge success, it was a huge success because the people on the internet, on the social media, basically very quickly um, shared this this infographic.
Uh, so yeah, this is the no, yeah, he's this is the guy. He he gave this interview that he said I'm not a ma mafia guy. Uh, this was just two years ago. Mm, no, he's he's arrested. Yeah, so uh, just uh, just very quickly uh, how the, the this current scandal broke out. So as I start as I started to say, talk that. Uh, that there was an article uh, printed uh, one year ago in April that basically said that uh, uh, Mayor of Warsaw gave this plot of land to these guys who didn't have any right to it, and they didn't have any right to it because it used to be owned to this by this uh, uh, Danish guy who uh, got recompensation from the Polish government during the during the, in the 50s. So, so you had this. This is an, an incredible story, and I believe that somebody will uh, make a movie on based on that. Uh, so you have this, this two pieces of land, yeah. And so and there is this huge discussion in Warsaw what to do with the, all the surroundings of parts of culture. And till 2010, there was this plan to just build like a uh, just build buildings around it, not very high, but just buildings like high, high like I don't know five stories high. And then at the very end of the first uh, term of Mayor of, of, uh, of Hanna Gronkiewicz's uh, first term, they changed the zoning law. And they allowed here to, to the skyscraper to be built. So you have this plot of land uh, was owned by chief of, I don't know how to call it, the chamber of, of uh, Warsaw Lawyers Association. He was the guy who Owned the, this, the who was owning this plot of land, and this plot of land was be, was owned by the other guy, by Marcinkowski guy. So, so the so the the, the local local so the Gazeta Wyborcza wrote basically that they have they did that this guy doesn't have any right to it, and all this uh, reprivatization around it it was just one big uh, fraud. Uh, so this and this was the this was basically the beginning of the. Uh, the reprivatization scandal. Uh, yeah, so this is another another happening we did. Uh, this is like Wałki is like Wałek in Polish is called. Uh, that's you can call uh, a fraud, uh, a, a like a fraud scheme of Wałek, or you, or it's also like a painter's tool. You know, that's that's it's supposed to be funny at, at least. It's for me. It's fun. Uh, uh, so this and at the beginning they said that everything is fine and there were you know this council, uh, this council members saying yeah there is everything fine everything is in order blah blah. So at the beginning they tried to you know to act as nothing happened. So uh, now nah, this is like one of our press conferences, and at the end, in uh, in September. 2017, Mayor of Warsaw was forced by uh, Grzegorz Schetyna, who is uh, the who is leader of Civic Civic Platform, to uh, uh, to fire like all the guys who were responsible for this uh, reprivatization. So that was the, the that was the uh, that was big uh, big thing. And finally, they got arrested. Uh, these guys, uh, these guys that took part in this reprivatization of this this piece of land. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, uh, so to sum up, just basically, uh, there were at least, uh, as I said, there were around four thousand uh, four thousand uh, properties being uh, that were reprivatized. There was at least one billion four hundred million zlotys uh, paid in uh, uh, paid in cash uh, to all these guys, and you have basically a ma mafia organized organized crime basically took part in big part of it and uh, of this whole process. So, but you have so many cases, and they are so complex, and every case is different th than other, that you have you would have to spend so much time to somehow to sort it all out. Uh, and what is I think what is important that 
that we believe at least and how we do how in our uh, from our point of view that most of these cases uh, were basically illegal or at least unconstitutional because on the grounds of Polish constitution you cannot uh, you cannot say you cannot cancel like uh, all the this this decision that were made that were issued in the late 40s or in the 50s that basically nationalized all those all of these pieces of that nationalized this land because you cannot act as nothing has happened for the last 70 years yeah and this is what the courts basically did on that they said okay the last 50 60 years we we don't recognize it basically we did, don't recognize that warsaw was completely destroyed we don't recognize that the buildings were rebuilt by people uh, we don't recognize that people were buying properties apartments on the basis of this decisions of this, this decisions that were issued in the 40s in the 50s by the communists people were given apartments rent controlled and this was their right this was their somehow their uh and it was all taken away from them in this situation when you act uh, when you give these buildings in nature in, i don't know if you can say it in english but I, I think you understand me that you 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 get building with people you are taking away the rights that they got beforehand in uh, goodwill so you are basically violating their human rights and you're also acting in this sense uh, uh, that you know that the, all this that's all the all the stuff that happened for the last uh, 50 60 years is not that important and uh, you can just wipe it out and you have so many many cases of reprivatization that we wonder how it could happen because on the grounds of the decree of Bieru, the Bieru decree it could never have happened and it happened any, anyways so and you have stories like Yolanta Brzeska when you, you just see that organized crime, people who probably, you know, are just mafia people who started to re started to be part of this business, uh, and uh, people probably launder money in this all this all these properties. So you have all the sorts of problems uh, around of it. So uh, sorry that my English is not that good and I'm not. Maybe I'm not uh, fully under understandable, but I'm happy to you know answer any questions and uh, talk about just anything from just you said if you heard. Yeah. You mentioned a big case. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, uh, Poland is the only country that uh, there, there was no basically uh, bill that would somehow deal with it in a systematic way and I think it's not by accident that we are the only country in the Eastern Bloc that uh, didn't have this uh, didn't have this bill and as, as far as we know there is no uh, government uh, draft or any project of this kind of bill. Uh, um, so you have you have the problem. You, do, you so you don't have this. You don't have from the government uh, from the government side. You don't see any action. You see action on the uh, on under, another level. Yeah, on the criminal justice level, I would say, but not on the systematic level. And you have also the local government because you have to remember that all the basically most of the decisions that were issued were issued by the mayor of Warsaw. So you have the mayor of Warsaw is responsible for the reprivatization. Uh, 
and you have uh, various different ways of handling this kind of buildings, as you said, there are decaying buildings in the city center that are completely empty, and they are uh, be, they are decaying. But I would, I if if have, do you know this building next to Bratska? There is this very big building, uh, uh, completely empty, Chmielna Spitalna. Yeah, it's owned. It's owned by. It's it's it was reprivatized. So you would you would find many many these bu decaying buildings in private hands. And why they are decaying? Because they're the the taxes on the on the uh, there is no catastrophe catastro. there is no you know there is no land value tax in Poland so you it's for it's very cheap to keep an, an empty building in the city city center and you also have all these kind of buildings that are their, their current legal status is not uh, you know it, it's not sorted out it is not sorted out so the local government says that we will not invest money into this building because we don't know what will happen with it next. Uh, so I would say that you, need, when you, you just need to deal with these cases as soon as possible, and you can deal with them on the basis of the of, of the Kred Biruta. And you don't need to wait for the big law to be passed to do something with it. This is just an excuse to, I think. Uh, do you have one suggestion? Yes, I don't mm -hmm. Yeah, personally, I'm in favor of this kind of tax, but when you start to talk in Poland about uh, taxing the property, pro taxing property in general, there is this, this huge, there is always huge uh, affair going on because people are thinking that, you know, that you have all these old ladies and you have all these poor people who own apartment buildings because, uh, own apartments, because they were able, they were happy enough to buy it from the city or from the state for a fraction of cost, so, uh, of, of, of price. So, so you have always these guys or these people saying, no, you cannot tax property because you would end up with, uh, you know, with a downtown only for the rich, yeah, and you would not see any poor people in the downtown area, even though poor people own apartment, own apartment and own uh, property in the downtown uh, uh, or in the, you know, in the center, city center. So it's very hard to push this kind of agenda because you have all this, you know, this all this post-communistic, all this post-transformation stuff. That we have, and it makes quite specific the, uh, you know, the the property tissue of 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 Warsaw, yeah. Because you have the situation when, where in a very very luxurious parts of Warsaw, you have all these sorts of of not that well of people who still own own apartments, yeah. Which is kind of not very usual, I would say. Yeah. I have two questions. Um, I guess the first one relates to uh, one of the answers you just gave. Um, you mentioned that so sort of the reprivatization in Warsaw was different from other cities in the Eastern Bloc and in Poland specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and you said, yeah, why is that? So is it the, yeah, that would be your answer. And I guess the second one would be, uh, why do you think that the uh, sort of mainstream media Gazeta Wyborcza didn't write about this stuff? Early, and it only took until you're, you're breaking the story to uh, put it on. So, uh, so as I said, um, Warsaw was totally destroyed. So, uh, for example, you have you know, uh, cities like Krakow or Poznań, mm -hmm. where owners of the buildings were still there, and the buildings were still there. Uh, you had, uh, of course, you had Jews that were a huge. They were all, They were you know they were a big part of the owners. And uh, and they were killed, and they lost uh, you know they lost property as well during the Second World War. And uh, but this is a very different uh, story to tell. There is it's a very different story. In Krakow, basically, you wouldn't have they didn't nationalize the, the land, but for example, they forced you to accept tenants. So you would have I don't know, you would have a, a private building which is private just in the 
the you know in the registry, but in the reality, all the building, all the apartments are uh, owned, uh, not owned, but are, they are in hands of of you know just ordinary people that were assigned to these buildings after the the, the war. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, my uh, grand grandfather uh, used to own. Uh, an apartment building in Krakow, and in the 90s he was still in the registry. Yeah, in the, in, not, just he, his name was still in, in the land registry. So, so this is a completely different story than uh, in Warsaw, where the whole land was nationalized in order to rebuild Warsaw. And uh, so this is the first thing. The other one, I don't know. I will, we we are we are we are asking uh, ourselves this question. And I compare it to have you uh, have you watched uh, uh, the movie called Spotlight uh, about like you know about Boston uh, pedophilia church uh, scandal? So you, 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 everybody knew about pedophilia in, in Boston. Yeah, everybody knew that. So uh, it was pretty pretty much the same story here. You know, like all I think I believe that. Most of the elites and most of the, especially the, the you know, the part, this, 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 this lawyers media, this, this, all the, all the lawyers and the judges and you know, people of means probably knew that this is one big fraud. And but you know, it was so big, it was there was so much money, and it was so compromising for so many people. That you just let it be, you just don't, don't ask, don't tell. Yeah? Uh, and in Warsaw, you had this uh, horrible story about the uh, mayor of Warsaw, whose her family, her husband and her, her daughter, inherited a building that was stolen by, uh, by Schwarzowice after the war from the Jews and from a, Jew, from, from a Jewish family. And uh, and they inherited this building from a thief, yeah. And they basically like, immediately when they got this building, they sold it with people inside to another company. So imagine that this the family, the closest family of, of Mayor of Warsaw, does something like this, and nothing ha nothing happens. Did she claim she didn't know about it? She, she said that she didn't know that her. She daughter. said no. She <laughs> said that it was done before her, uh, be, before she started to be mayor of Warsaw, yeah. and this, but this was ridiculous. So what? You know, like, and she said that uh, she said that her family was a, a, approved by the former president of Warsaw, which was kind of you can say that it was from law and justice, yeah. And so she said no, law and justice gave it to me. And, yeah, this, this is the way she she uh, she tried to explain the situation, but it was there was a big story in two thousand six, uh, and there was one of uh, one of the biggest uh, Polish weekly wrote about this. Nothing has happened, so I believe that this kind of stuff happens in Moscow, in one battle, I don't know Astana, in this kind of countries where this, you know Zhirinovsky. This is the way that probably Zhirinovsky deals with stuff. But here, she was never challenged by the media. She was basically not challenged by the opposition party. Because she didn't talk about the uh, law and justice, didn't talk, didn't talk about the scandal for long. So, uh, and in normal, I believe in, in Western democracy, it would never could happen that Mary of Warsaw somehow is benefiting from Schmatzowice, you know, from, 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 from this awful atrocities of the Second World War. So, uh, so it also says a lot about us that you know Poles still somehow uh, are maybe more Eastern. Uh, in their, their mentality is more Eastern than, than Western. Um, you started talking a little bit about the um, restoration rights of Jewish citizens of Poland who were killed. Um, but is there any is there any kind of systematic way for of them or their descendants to reclaim property? Or land, or not or land on in Warsaw? In Poland in general, is there any legislative provisions for that? No, special provisions, no. no. So you you would have uh, you would have this part of Jews that were uh, citizens of these Western countries 
which were covered somehow mm -hmm. through the agreements that were signed uh, by the by by the communists, and that was a lot of people. And you have of course, and the, probably the biggest part of them is people who now live in Israel. Yeah, who uh, but if they were Polish citizens when this was now I don't know I'm not sure. Oh my God, I'm not sure about this, but. I believe that they can just go to the court as any other ordinary mm -hmm. uh, person and try to fight, you know, to get it as any Bosnian, try to get it. Mm -hmm. So this is basically, those who are not covered by these international agreements can, you know, somehow get their, uh, get, you know, get their properties through courts. I, I, I think so, I'm not 100% sure, as I told you, I'm, I know how, how, how is it got? I know more about Warsaw than, than the, the, the rest of the country. But when it comes to Warsaw, this, as I told you at the beginning, they had to be in Poland, they had to be uh, the owner of a building that was still standing after the war, blah, blah, blah. blah. I just thought that makes some special because you could make the argument that the Jewish citizens of Poland, their property was expropriated by the occupying Nazis, wasn't nationalized by the Soviets. So it's no memory that that may have been a strong message. I don't know, it was just it was a very just time to be, you know, it was very just for everybody. Yeah? They were, you would have, you know, uh, you would have this very limited amount of time to, you know, to submit this form in Warsaw. And if you were, I don't know, if you were in Russia and the constant mm -hmm. of course you couldn't do it, you know. So, uh, or if you were, so it was unjust for everybody, I think. Yeah? So, of course, there was, there's, this, this, there's, Sometimes you they, you hear about the, that the Polish government will pay off the Jews through I don't know this is all the various anti-Semitic you know stories that are going on. But as 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 what as long as I am concerned, I'm not concerned. As uh, at least what I know is that you know they are treated as every other basically citizen and other group. There's no, there's basically, there's no, I don't believe that there's, a, I'm personally, I'm also Jewish descendants, and I don't believe that the Jews has to have like any other special right. But I mean that when I'm saying this, they should be, everybody should be treated accordingly to the law. And as you can see, uh, in Warsaw, the law is being violated on the daily terms. And, it, and when it comes to properties, how about Ninja? When it comes to when it comes to to properties uh, of huge value and uh, properties where uh, hundreds of people live in, and they are basically they are basically treated by this country as uh, as a piece of meat. Frankly speaking, I don't know, but probably they submitted uh, this, this this form. They submitted this request after the war that they want to keep this building, and uh, but how? I really don't know. We are just uh, Mateusz left uh, Mateusz left the, the 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 conference room, but we what we do, and every year and almost every month we learn more about this this scandal, and it turns out that you know when you look into this decree you would see it's it's written on one page one page basically yeah <laughs> and you can okay so it cannot be that difficult to understand it for example when they when this happened you know i was started i started to read all these agreements that poland signed with the, the, the with these uh, Western countries, because they were just basically they were saying so much bullshit that I said, no, okay, I need to I need to learn some, myself this. So I I found this agreement, I I printed it and I, I read it, and it turned out that what they are saying is basically bullshit, but it's being uh, you know authorized by uh, Mayor of Warsaw, the deputy of Warsaw, Mayor of Warsaw, and one uh, uh, one uh, very famous lawyer who who wrote an expertise on that, and this expertise is 
20 pages long and for 19 pages it says basically what i think and at the at the very end of the last page it says but when it comes to warsaw it's maybe a bit different story yeah so so you you had this huge enterprise which was built around the around the privatization uh, uh legal legal uh, uh enterprise which you know basically produce so many false and so many uh, misleading uh, statements and and legal way of uh, of looking into these things yeah. so because if you had this claim if you have a claim you can you 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 uh, at, this is at least what our courts uh say you can sell this claim if you are uh uh if you if your parents or grandparents uh, uh claimed a building according to this decret of Beirut, now they can sell this claim to another another person so yeah 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 there is even one uh there is even one example which is even more uh, uh, which is even more uh, this is this is not a best picture I, I I couldn't find a better one but there is a building just on Hoja 25 which is like also a very 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 good place uh, on Warsaw map and it was bought by Mosakowski who is who used to be also owner of this of the building where Brzeska used to live for 50 slotters so what he said that he said that he bought this the claim for this building for 50 slotters and the, the this case went they and the, he got it back this building uh and what is more he then claimed then he sued the, the the local government for all the lost profits he could got he could have gotten could have, if he would have gotten this building earlier yeah so he sued the local government for five million slotters. First appeal got, uh, gave him five million slotters. Second, first court gave him five million slotters. Second uh, appeal said, okay, five million is too much. You'd get one million. So you, they had to pay him what is one million slotters, even though he bought this claim for 50 slotters. And this, this case went into the highest court. The, the, and the highest court said, well, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. Like an agreement, uh, an agreement uh, the, uh, that uh, you know this that could allow all of this is invalid, is illegal, because you cannot buy for 50 slotters something which is worth, which can be worth uh, millions. So it is illegal to make even this kind of an agreement. But so what? He has an apartment building in the city of Warsaw, and now he co he got this one million slotters, and now we need to get it back from him. And he, he, on the paper, he doesn't own anything as well because everything own, is owned by his uh, mother or you know lover, lovers and stuff. We, so probably we will not, ne will not, will never see this this one million what which was uh, was given to him uh, in this way. And uh, but what I want to say that so they asked that this old lady to come to testify. If you if you really admit that you sold you sold you sold him this this this, this right to this building for this fifty slotters, and she said yes. And you, you know, and you can she and she died two two weeks ago, and of course, uh, two weeks not two weeks ago, but two weeks later. And you ask yourself, what the heck is going on? You know, like how come this lady is testifying before the court that she did it accordingly to her will she knows exactly that you know this building was you know it's worth millions uh, so you have two explanations yeah so money was put you know under the table there were so many under the table or she was forced if we know that these guys are connected to organized crime i can imagine myself that you know she they came to her and said you need to testify like this because if not, you will end up like Jessica. I find the role of the courts and the prosecution service. Are you afraid of saying that there's a strong possibility of corruption in the Because some of the decisions to me sound like 
understand absurd uh, from any rational point of view. And I can't quite understand how it happens. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> uh, so on the one hand, you would probably have, you know, but you would just, I, I call it like a country from a, like a, from carton, I don't know, from cardboard, you know, like a country that is very weak, you know, our, our country is very weak and you have all this chaos in all of these institutions and people just don't care about anything. And so you would have this, one of these explanation that would say that this is basically part of, of, you know, of Polish weakness and of Polish disease. Uh, and the, on the other hand, you would say, oh, come on, this is impossible that they claimed for two years, for example, that Yolanta Brzeska killed herself. Yeah, that is it's just you cannot accept. You cannot accept this kind of verdict because if you, you know, it's just un, unbelievable, you know, that this could be the, the case. Uh, but what is more, you know, that the when the, the, the there was this, we have the CBA office, yeah, like the Cent Bureau, Anti Corruption Bureau. And this Anti Corruption Bureau, in, in the late 2014, uh, went to the prosecutor office and, uh, you know, said basically that there is a scandal, there is a probably a corruption scandal involving all this property next to the Palace of Culture. And they did it. They did it. I thought, and they did it in the late 2014. And in two, in uh, in June 2015, and it was based. They had they they had wiretaps. They had you know they were wiretapping uh, the uh, Warsaw mayor's office. And the prosecutor office said, "We will not, we will not dig into it. We we we, we uh, officially uh, refuse your request." In June 2015, yeah, and this article in the local press was published in April 2016, and people were arrested just a few months ago, yeah. So you have, you, I cannot, you cannot, but you cannot explain this in other ways, yeah. There was corruption, or there was no, there was corruption. <laughs> there was, there was corruption. No, 90, 99 percent. There was, there is very organized crime you know i think that this is a big problem with uh, with 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 people with foreigners looking into poland i believe that poland is more like a southern italy for example you know you have this very strong family ties very weak state you have this uh, uh, you know uh, this idea this also this feudal history you know this is also very important that this this used to be a you know basically a, a feudal state and uh, and you have this very close connections between organized crime and the state and because organized crime mafia is basically an, another form of a state yeah when the state is failing when the state is crumbling mafia takes uh, uh, mafia gets in yeah so uh so I believe that there is a huge problem with organized crime in Poland, and this problem is not addressed because people don't want to admit that we have this kind of problem of corruption. Corruption not on this very basic ground when you have to, I don't know, pay a policeman in order to get through or something. Yeah, we have this corruption on this a bit higher ground about this uh, when it comes to real estate. When it comes to you know all these places where you have a lot of a lot of money. It is. Yeah. It's. It's very surprising. I'm 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 a council member, and you can, I think there is around 300 council members in Warsaw, which is in, in crazy, insane. But at least at 100 of them is from the opposition party. Yeah. So what the heck they were doing all this time, you know? Because when I became uh when I started uh, when I became uh I was elected to be uh council member it, this was the first thing and the main thing that was concerning my constitution constitution constitu 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 yeah. 
<laughs> my 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 uh, people who who uh, who elected me. Yeah. So this was the you need to come to our uh, building. Yeah. You need to go look into this. Uh, papers. I f we think there is something fishy going on. These people, this, the same names are popping up all the time. It's impossible, you know, uh, that this is all d done accordingly to the law. So, so what they were doing, why they were not acting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is an, a, a very an ex, uh, extraordinary way of dealing with it because in normal country we would have courts we would have a prosecutor office and you would have a, a mayor of warsaw who would uh, be doing all this stuff yeah so uh, basically this committee is set up in order to change the decisions of uh, mayor of Warsaw yeah all, all this this reprivatization um, decisions so um, unfortunately we are not living in a, a normal country and uh, so I believe that sometimes maybe this kind of of of, of, of ways of handling things are necessary uh, having said that, this is a very complex uh, stuff uh, and I don't know and there's, there's so many cases there are as I said there are around 4,000 cases and 4,000 more cases uh, um, pending so uh, so I don't I don't even know how they want to deal with this huge uh, huge problem and I, I heard today that they want to deal with one uh, property per month if they gonna if they gonna deal with one property per month, it will mean that in 100 years they maybe they will they will as, as you know achieve something. Yeah. So so I believe that they will choose the easiest easiest targets. Of course, mayor mayor of Warsaw is one of the easiest targets. They will and uh, to, to 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 just to prove that the the local government here is totally corrupted. But I think that everybody knows that uh, you <laughs> now. So. Um, I don't know. I don't know, but I don't believe. I don't. I don't believe that this will be a, a very uh, uh, how to say it, efficient way of, of dealing with it. I believe. But on the other hand, you know, if there is a now, I believe that there is the prosecutor office is handling around 100 cases now. 100 cases were. Probably the, the the properties were were uh, were given away uh, uh, in illegal manner. One hundred buildings, and every building is worth I don't know five million, ten million more. So you have one billion lotus just just now being questioned. Yeah, the property of value of one billion lotus is now being questioned. So this, so I believe also to 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 make us like a, a general maybe statement that. When we say about transformation in Poland, yeah, that we are still under transformation. You know, this is that if such basic things like property is still being questioned, and the public good is still being what is public good, what is public domain is still being questioned, and you have all this corruption in the legal system. We, I believe that still we are under, you know, the under this process of being of turning into a uh, liberal democracy, and if you dig into this privatization scandal, you can understand why law and justice has this kind of support, and why, for example, dismantling of of uh, legal system is uh, is done in this in this very easy manner because there are so many there are so few people to to defend it because what we are waiting for, for example, is that the court the the you know the the the, the judges. They haven't done anything. They they should step forward and they should take uh, some kind of you know just to say something. You know, okay, we did this wrong. We made uh, uh, errors. We want to somehow to to uh, you know to find a way 
forward for this problem, but they are silent. They they don't say anything. And uh, in this in this kind of circumstances, law and justice can do basically what they want. But the, but the problem of privatization or of the failed Polish state? We believe that you can deal with this problem uh, uh, in Warsaw on the basis of current law. That you don't have to, uh, you don't need to have any new law. You just need to have uh, uh, good lawyers, good uh, good courts that would do it accordingly to the law. Because at the end, you turn, it would turn out that out of this eight thousand people who uh, submitted these uh, forms, you would have I don't know two thousand, three thousand people who are really can uh, can get this property back, which is. It, which is less than was you know which is less than it was uh, was given for the time being, and m most of these cases should be uh, should these all these people should be paid not in the buildings but in cash. They should be recompensated, not uh, not given um, not given buildings because all because the this problem. The, the, the biggest problem of reprivatization is that the, the buildings are being given away as they are. You know what I mean? You know, in, I, we say it in Polish, in nature. I don't know how if you say it something like this in English, but oddawanie w naturze, something. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and you can do it uh, if you are if you have smart uh, lawyers. If you have, uh, you you can do it uh, without any any bill. I just we just talked today with one of the. One of the ju retired judges, and and basically she said the same thing. Yeah, you, you need, you don't, we don't need a special bill to, 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 uh, to somehow to manage this crisis. We just need judges that will be thoughtful. You just need lawyers that would know how to deal with it, and uh, and use and just use this decree of Beirut as it was written. Know how, know the way it is now being. Uh, interpret, uh, inter, we, you know, because this is this is the problem that the way that this has, the law was so much, there was a law somewhere, you know, this is the law, and you have the way you are using this law, and this this is two different, completely different stuff, and it was excessively, uh, it was excessively, uh, you know. Uh, used not in the way it should be used. Now my question, first of all, sorry to get on so late, so <laughs> maybe I'm making a question now that you're already young for this course, so you have been discussing the case of the many buildings that are in question about the property, how 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 corruption is being involved in that, but could you say something also about not build property, but plots of land uh, in the same areas that are uh, feasible for redevelopment or for development. Uh, you know what I mean? Are there cases of people claiming the property? Yeah. Of empty plots somewhere in Bola or in yeah. Bola or somewhere that. As I said at the beginning, you know, uh, on the legal grounds, it's impossible to reprivatize empty plot of land. It's basically it's all the all the reprivatization that were made uh, that were be, were reprivatized were done this they were illegally on the in at least in Warsaw. So you would have and I, the decree of decret Biruta said explicitly you can only get you can only keep property if the property is still standing after the war. That was it. So you have you have these hundreds of plots of land that was were I think that were taken away illegally. Basically, you have to remember that this was you know this was the communists were wise. The communists were 
they knew how to write this piece of legislation. So they said, basically, the number of people that can keep their properties have to be very, very limited, yeah? So the only people who are in Warsaw, who are, uh, and whose buildings are still intact, can, can somehow, uh, uh, you know, somehow uh, apply to keep their buildings. If you are not in Warsaw, if the building is not intact, and if the building is not meant to be uh, uh, used for the public uh, infrastructure, yeah, because that was another, another story, so you you cannot apply to keep the building. So if you cannot apply to keep the building, how come now all these people are getting these empty plots of land? And the decree of the, I really I really strongly recommend you if you are interested, just read the, this decree. It's one page. It's basically one page, and it's incredible that it could be it could have been so so misused. It's 45, 45. So the rest of the people were allowed to get some kind of recompensation. I don't have this the decree bureau with me, but but there was this nine. There was there were it was ten points, and the ninth point was said that they can get some recompensation, and the recompensation was pay, was was uh, meant to be paid in uh, uh, city bonds, and there was a, and the uh, there should have been a special decree. For this, all these other people who didn't get anything, that sh there should be another decree, a government decree that would somehow said in how big would be their compensation. Yeah, uh, but this, this decree never uh, materialized, and because the Stalinists took over in 48, and so it was probably it was never needed during the communist regime, and when the new Poland and the communist uh, regime, uh, uh, you know, fell. The new government, the new the the, the third republic, uh, never issued this kind of uh, decree. So the, and this decree could be completely arbitrary. They could say, I don't know, ten percent of the. Uh, they could just write that they will have you know ten percent of the um, of the uh, price of this of the you know worth of this building, yeah, uh, or and we will pay this in a bond in thirty years old. You know, I don't know. <laughs> Jesus, this is there are so many, so many specialized uh, the weird words. Anyways, you can you know you you can you can easily handle this recompensation. You can say that you would get I don't know ten percent of the value, yeah, and this will be paid in pub in the government bonds that will be paid in thirty years. Yeah, you could say something like this. And this is just it's not there is no bill needed. It's just there is a decree by the government needed. Like a, it's not a. It, you don't need to have a bill to to get it. So, but it was never never published and it was never done. So the question is why? The, the question is why? Uh, I don't know, but I know for sure sure, sure that m I believe that most of the cases of po of Warsaw privatization were completely illegal. No, I'm, I'm not that. <laughs> no, no, I'm not afraid. I, actually, I only once got uh, this kind of warning. I was because nobody wanted to tell us. Uh, who is owner? Oh, because it was when we started our work. Uh, this guy was not. He was not like very well known. Yeah, we we made him famous. So. So we ask who is behind this stuff because you know most of the cases were not uh, uh, public didn't know about this uh, this stuff. So I called my friend who is like active in the real estate market and I asked him, can you check who is doing reprivatization of gymnasium on Farda Street? And he called me back a few, day, few few days later and he said. Uh, Martin, this Martin Koski guy. Okay, so I said, great, thank you very much. And he called me back two, two or two days later, and he said, you know, because I got this call because I started to, you know, to look into the details, and these people know that you are looking into these details, and I will just say you, I will just tell you, just be careful how you cross the crossings. So this was this kind of, I don't know, he was like half serious, half joking. And I said, okay, if this guy is, if if, the, if this is, 
if it, it cannot be that dangerous just to, to ask, you know, stuff that should be public, you know. So this was one of the reasons we decided to 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 give him this this map, this this infographic, because I said, you know, you, you it, this has to be public. This knowledge knowledge people deserve to know at least that who is doing all this stuff, who, the names, you know, this is, this is the, the you know the basic, very basic thing, you know. And even this was denied to Warsawers because this was all made uh, without basic, uh, you know, ways of uh, of transparency. You know, people learned that they are living in the in a building that is reprivatized when it was given away. You know, they learned at the very end, they, so they couldn't protest, for example. So, uh, uh, so, and this, the, the 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 city office did whatever they could uh, to to dig and to hide this information. No, it is. It's not. It you need to have uh, legal. You need to have. You need to have like a legal case to to learn the ownership yeah it is possible but you need to have uh, to justify your case somehow yeah 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 so what we say uh, uh, what we say and what we ask that all the decisions that were issued by the by the city hall by the by the local government should be public and should be online but they are not so so you can understand if there is basically it was very easy for them to 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 get these properties because they were the only part of the process who were who was informed and who wanted to you know to 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 to, to succeed because the other part was royal was the the city hall which was obviously not interested into uh you know not interested uh into doing it uh properly and uh, you had all those tenants who didn't have any right to be uh you know to be part of the process because they were uh, rejected by the courts as a legal uh you know i don't know how to call it but they were not part of the the legal proceeding because they didn't have the the court said that since they are just renting the apartments they are they don't have this legal um, uh, legal right to, to be part of this process. So, and for the very and for a very long time period of time, even the owners of the apartments in this kind of buildings were denied the right to be part of the, the of this process, which is which is quite crazy. And so, so you would have basically you would have the 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 the, the this this cases. You can imagine that there is a case of of very important. I don't know. There is a land, piece of land which is worth millions of zlotys and it is owned by the city by the city and there is a, a court uh, session and the only people who <laughs> who show up for the hearing are the people who want that who want to get the back the, the property you know so it's easy in this kind of conditions to to, to you know because the court that doesn't uh, it's not like uh it's it, it's a, an adm administrative hearing it's not a uh, this is very difficult. I need. I had to. I had to be. I need. I started to learn. Uh, teach. Uh, learn uh, law because it, it's. It's it, without it. It's really uh, hard to understand all of it. But there is uh, the civil way of handling things. Yeah, in the court uh, system, and there is this administrative ways of handling things. So this is the. This is. These are the admi administrative cases. So you don't have all the. This is not like a normal uh, court hearing. Yeah. This is like a. Uh, uh, this is, yeah. I don't know how to. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's it doesn't have to fulfill all these criteria of a of a full legal uh, court hearing. Okay. Last question. <laughs> Mm. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, uh, in the land registry, no. You would have to ask the city office. But, uh, but the city office can always say, you know, there was this claim. Yesterday there was no claim. Today there is a claim. So I uh, so buying an apartment in an old building in Warsaw is quite uh, uh, risky uh, because I I know I have a friend who uh, maybe not a friend but I know a story about a guy who was basically doing this nadbudova you know like there he was building another store another you know story. Uh, and uh, at the beginning of the process, there was no, there was no, there was no reprivatization. Yeah, and at the end, uh, they, they suddenly a guy showed up and said, "This is, you know, this is all mine now." And uh, he had, in, if he were, if he would uh, not uh, fight with him, he would lo lose everything, because he would. Uh, this, this another story was part of the building which was under reprivatization. You know, you, you follow me, yeah. So he was very lucky that the, basically this guy didn't this this this, this reprivatization guy didn't took over his property took over this this story that he was building. So if you are a private owner, you are more prote or you're, of course you're 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 better protected than other uh, than 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 the tenants. But if you have a building where there is less than fifty percent uh, building owned by uh, individual uh, owners. You can have huge problems because, for example, I know a story from Poznańska Street where, where a guy where it was it was it was reprivatized. Ninety percent of it was reprivatized, and ten percent was owned by the individual people. And what they did, they raised the technical fees to one hundred zlotys per meter square. So, and she had like an apart big apartment. So, and she so and she was not even informed that they. They raise these technical fees because if you have ninety percent of the uh, of the wspólnota mieszkaniowa, you don't need to <laughs> you you can uh, make any decision you want. Yeah, so she learned after three months that she has to pay thirty thousand zlotys to this, to these guys. So she went into the court and tried to you know overturn it, but uh, if 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 it was very difficult and at the end she was forced to sell her apartment to these guys under the the market uh, price so they they have they know how to misuse the system even if you are and they can force you to to sell your apartment even if you are owner of this apartment in this kind of buildings if the building is owned mostly by the by the individuals there's basically no risk but in other cases i would i would not recommend it